In this video, I'm gonna talk about how I would learn to code if I was starting over in 2022. And I'm gonna share some habit hacks if it's been hard for you to stick with coding. I was a data engineer at a fang company for two and a half years. I've also had multiple software engineering internships from a data science startup to a quant hedge fund to a supercomputer. Make sure you watch until the end of the video where I talk more about my personal experience and how I actually learned how to code. There's a super popular book by Simon Sinek and it's called Start With Why. Why do you wanna to learn to code? That should be the first question you ask yourself when you think that you wanna start learning to code. Is it to solve a specific problem? Is it because you want a certain job at a certain company? Is it because you wanna make good money? These are all actually valid reasons. Focusing on your why will help you get started and it'll especially help you keep going. One little hack for sticking with it here is to make a habit of interacting with or listening to or reading about people in tech that you admire. Now it's probably gonna be Elon Musk. <laughs> It could be Steve Jobs, or it could be someone you know. If you fill your brain and your time with the things that inspire you, and you make a habit of it and do it regularly, then you'll be thinking about coding and learning more often, and you'll be more likely to start learning and stick with it. It is so daunting with all the information out there, all the ads that you see when you type in how to code, from boot camps to school, to tutorials, where do you start? I look at these resources on a kind of spectrum. Go back to your why and figure out why you wanted to start learning to code. It could range from just learning for fun all the way to accomplishing something super technical like building the next big blockchain or privacy preserving data analysis. If your goal is to do something just for fun, then the route you take should be just as fun. If it's more technical and traditional, you might need to take a more traditional route, like going to school for it, or maybe even getting a master's degree or PhD. For people just starting out though, I would definitely recommend taking the fun route. This could be things like YouTube tutorials, free courses, or some easy to read books. And as it gets more technical and more formal, that's where you wanna consider things like boot camps, going to college or university for coding or computer science, and could even go all the way to getting an advanced degree. Starting with a fun and easy way to learn, that'll get you started and it'll make it easier to keep going because you're enjoying the experience. That's really what's most important. One little hack here to make a habit of this is to follow tech influencers on your favorite social media platform or YouTube like this one, subscribe so that you'll see it more often and it'll be in your brain more often and give you that little boost to get started. You've figured out your why, you have a route that you wanna take. Now it's time to learn the fundamentals of coding. The first step is picking which language you want to learn to code in. Since I recommend taking the fun route, I highly recommend starting with Python. It's one of the easiest languages to learn. Everyone's using it. It can do tons of things and it's actually one of my favorite languages. You could also pick something popular like JavaScript or Java. I definitely recommend starting with something that's super popular because the more popular it is, the more resources that are out there for you to learn. Then start learning the basics. The first thing you're gonna learn is how to make the words hello world appear on the screen. Then you'll get into things like declaring variables, loops, and then data structures, and then algorithms. Don't worry too much about the algorithms when you're just starting out, but do have a firm understanding of the data structures. Algorithms will come a little bit later, but it's not super important when you're starting out and it can get overwhelming, which is not what you want. You want the learning to flow essentially and build up step by step. A little habit hack I have here is to make your learning and focus sessions easy, obvious, and attractive and satisfying. So start with an easy tutorial. Keep your IDE open on your desktop and work on things that you actually like doing so that it's satisfying and maybe reward yourself after completing a small task. You've got some of the fundamentals down. You feel like you can write a little bit of code and you're starting to transition into this phase of, okay, how does this code turn into an actual project or an actual app? That's when you actually need to start building projects. But start small. Start with little tiny projects. For example, you could start by building a timer. That's basically just a little app where the numbers go up or down. The coolest thing is that you can use this timer as a Pomodoro timer. In other words, a focus session timer. That can actually help you focus as you continue learning to code. It gives you that satisfaction that you built something that you yourself can actually use. Taking it one step further, which I highly recommend, is getting one user to actually use the thing that you built. Say you built a timer 
and you got your friend to use it. When someone else starts using the thing that you built, it is the most motivating thing in the world, let me tell you. Not only that, they get to give you feedback on the usability, and that's how you're really gonna improve as a programmer. Then once you've got some projects under your belt, join a community that's also building projects. That could be like an open source community, other people learning, or maybe a community that you build apps for. Getting involved with other people is a huge accountability hack that helps you really keep going as you're learning to code. The first time I ever actually wrote one line of code, I didn't even realize that I was coding or coding. I was basically putting little widgets into my MySpace page and making it look really cool. That was about in middle school. A few years went by. I did some more HTML stuff in high school. And then a few years later, I was actually not going to school. I was living on my own between high school. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna let you guys know a secret. I went to college for accounting and then I dropped out and then I was working and I was actually like making music and stuff. And I was like, man, there's gotta be a way to automate some of this music making kind of thing. So I started learning more about tech. While I was working my blue collar jobs as a painter and construction worker, I would listen to audiobooks about tech. One of the most influential books that I read was Steve Jobs' autobiography. I also read books on artificial intelligence and data and math in general. So then I was like, okay, I'm gonna learn to code. So I started with MIT OpenCourseWare online, and that was pretty cool, but I never really got into it. And I couldn't see how that applied to actual like artificial intelligence and apps and things like that. So I was like, okay, it's not too late to go back to school. I'm gonna go to school for computer science. So I started learning more on the side, and then I went to school and learned a lot of the fundamentals. But I'll tell you, the times that I learned the most were actually working on personal projects outside of school. Working on those projects helped me connect the code with the actual apps and tools that people use. That was a huge gap in my understanding at that time. For this, I literally just used YouTube tutorials, the documentations of programming languages and frameworks, basically anything I could get my hands on on the internet in order to solve the problem that I was coming across. When you're trying to build a specific thing, you run into problems. And if you're determined to build that thing, that's when you really learn how to work around those problems. That's really the best kind of learning. I also started doing as many internships as possible, like I mentioned in the intro, and I joined a computer science club where we practiced interview questions, preparing for interviews at tech companies. During one of my last summers, I was working at an internship and it was my junior year, so I knew I needed to get a good job coming up into the next semester. And that's when I really planned out how I was gonna study for these interview questions. And I basically set a goal to study every day for at least one hour that I would do in 25 minute chunks. And so with all of that, going from knowing nothing about coding to all those internships and studying for interviews, and then my first job after school, I got as a data engineer at a Fang big tech company. And that was so cool. It really did make it all worth it. And it really does change your life. At least for me, going from a dropout to working at Fang. That said, I'm still learning how to code. Right now, I'm building a social app for reaching your goals and tracking your habits with friends. It's kind of like Instagram mixed with the habit tracker. And every time I work on a new feature, I might need to learn how to do something new. And I'll use the same resources that I used in the beginning, whether that's the documentation, maybe a YouTube tutorial, if that's the quickest way, or even inventing something brand new. And this is where I'll definitely say that having users really motivates you to keep going and keep learning about how to code. So if you do want help building the habits that'll get you started and help you keep going in your journey learning how to code, definitely download the Boost Habit Tracker app, set some goals and habit goals, like studying for an hour a day, working on a project on the weekends, and then find friends who have those similar goals, either on the Boost app or friends you already have, so that you can track your progress together, motivate each other, learn from each other, and basically just have fun becoming someone who knows how to code. With that, give this video a like so that more people can learn how to code. Subscribe for more videos about tech and productivity and follow me on Instagram, boostproductivityjake, all one word, for daily inspiration about productivity and tech. All right, see you guys.